Now, please welcome Ella Watson Stryker, GPH graduation keynote speaker in 2015. Ella joins us from Michigan in her role as humanitarian representative in the U.S. with Médecine Sans Frontières, where she is working on the front lines to improve conditions in nursing home facilities so hard hit by COVID-19. Hello class of 2020, congratulations on your accomplishment today and welcome to a world that needs you more than ever. My work has taken me to some places far from my home in New York City, but now for the first time I'm responding to a humanitarian crisis here in the United States. For those of us who train to respond to health emergencies, this pandemic is proving to be a marathon, but one that needs to be run at a sprint. The only way forward is together and the skills that you have now mastered are critically needed and critically relevant to the world you graduate into. I'm delighted to introduce my colleague, my friend, and current teammate, Dr. Maria Guevara. Maria was trained in pulmonary and critical care medicine at the University of Florida, and also holds a diploma in tropical medicine and hygiene from the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine, and a Master of Science in Global Health Policy from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. Maria has worked with Doctors Without Borders since 2004 in numerous countries and roles, always showing up where her broad skill set is most needed. In addition to treating patients, Maria has also worked on humanitarian policy and advocacy initiatives. From 2012 to 2017, she was the Regional Humanitarian Representative in Asia. Following that, she was the Senior Coordinator for our initiative to stop attacks on healthcare in 2018. She is currently a senior operational positioning and advocacy advisor in global health in our office in Geneva, although currently she's on detachment at this time to lead our medical activities in the COVID-19 response. Greetings 2020 graduates of the NYU School of Global Public Health. It goes without saying the great honor to be here speaking to you as your commencement speaker especially in this most surreal moment of our lives today. You may be wondering how such a person like me have come upon this great opportunity to address you all on one of what is and will be, hopefully, the many great moments of your life. But that is exactly the beauty of life, finding the silver linings in the most inopportune moments. As a medical humanitarian worker, I have seen my share of such moments having worked in conflict zones, in numerous outbreaks, including Ebola, in the wake of extreme weather disasters all over the world. But little did I expect to find myself in a hotel room in middle America on an exploratory mission with a team from Doctors Without Borders, as we look to see how we can assist the elderly and their caretakers during this unprecedented COVID-19 pandemic and be delivering a commencement speech through a steel bubble. The situation we find ourselves in today is a litmus test to humanity and is the first test for you all as you step out as graduates in this new world ahead of you. Are you ready? As we sit here stuck in our homes, speculating and imagining futures and what the new normal is or might be, we are in fact getting a glimpse of this in real time with COVID-19. We are living a novel situation for society today, even if pandemics are not necessarily a known entity. Certainly in your studies in global public health, you would know infectious outbreaks are not new. This new modern pestilence, however, is testing our metal, like we have not seen since the great advancements in medicine and public health in the last two centuries. And as it gallops around the globe, showing that it has no prejudices and spares no one in particular. It is proving itself a mighty adversary to humanity, shaking the building blocks of human existence known to date, highlighting the weaknesses of human-made and societal architectural designs. It magnifies powerfully the existing structural injustices, inequities, and inequalities of the anthropocentric world of today. In a much slower-paced onset, though not less real, is another much larger looming challenge facing us, that of climate change and environmental degradation. We see, as many have, the glaring link between climate change and COVID-19. While their timelines may be different, 
they do have some key commonalities. That is, they do not respect national boundaries, they are global in impact, and they demand a collective response. This is the new normal that lies ahead, one of a very different landscape that requires a radical approach and not the mere normalization of adjusted actions using past reflexes. Rather, it is asking for a going beyond norms, opting for radical inclusion, hope and courage to walk into the unknown and undertake the profound change that the planet, humanity and all life need. The new normal is forcing humans to think differently, act more responsibly, live more sustainably, and work more collectively. In essence, behave more respectfully and humanely, not only towards each other, but to all life forms. It is requiring humans to take an ideological stance to see humanity as a collective, a community of humans that work together in solidarity to ease inequities and inequalities and restore health to humans and its ecosystem. Are you ready to be that radical agent of change? As you contemplate what the next steps for you could be, should be, would be, just consider a few words. Vulnerability. To steal a quote from George or Orwell, we all know that while all animals are equal, some are more equal than others. At some point or another, we are all vulnerable to some extent. But we know that inequities and disparities are experienced disproportionately more by certain populations. COVID-19, while not the great equalizer because of this fact, it nevertheless reminds of our collective fragility. Do not forget that. Responsibility. There is this great tale of two maps, of climate responsibility versus climate vulnerability. The overwhelming majority of those responsible for climate change is in the North, whereas those most vulnerable are in the South. Regardless of where we sit, however, we are all one species, that is, human. We collectively are responsible for the world we create and react to. It is our collective responsibility to not only be the cause, but also and especially be the solution we require. Connectivity. COVID is the best example of what globalization means, highlighting just how connected we really are, reminding us that our collective health security contributes to individual health security. It also shows the importance of relationality, reminding us to review, rethink, we envision our relations, not only to, to each other, but to Earth, our natural ecosystem, nature, moving from a predatory perspective to one of better stewardship. But the first relationship must begin with ourselves, highlighting a critical step to first tend to our inner gardens, connecting with the internal environment as we then relate to the external. Connections means building bridges, it is asking us to listen better to the world of science and empirical study and also be able to listen to local knowledge and lived experience. It means being the bridge between these two worlds. Finally, opportunity. The Chinese character Wei Ju, an oft quoted and off quoted word to mean danger and opportunity, when actually it means at a critical juncture. Earth has forced the world to stop rest, take a moment to breathe. It's urged us to push the reset button. For you, as you step out and find yourself in a critical juncture, will you dare to take the road less traveled and in doing so to make it wider for more people to follow into a future that is healthier for everyone? I leave you with a last quote from Albert Camus from his book, The Plague. What's true of all evils in the world is true of plague as well. It helps men to rise above themselves. Are you ready to be the curator of new possibilities? These are my questions to you.